The SNP leadership is close to collapsing as Nicola Sturgeon's husband lies in the Alex Salmon inquiry and we pay tribute to a British hero, Captain Sir Tom Moore. Hello everyone and welcome to today's programme. We're going to talk about uh, the SNP in fighting but before we start uh, we're going to begin with uh, some sad news. Uh, Captain Sir Tom Moore is no longer with us. I want to pay a massive tribute to this British hero who for years put other people's lives at um, first before his uh, by serving in our armed forces and towards the end of his life in the last few months he managed to raise over 33 million pounds for our healthcare workers. So rest in peace, sleep well Captain and thank you for everything that you've done uh, for the country and our people. Now let's uh, start the show by talking about the SNP leadership. As you know in the last uh, week or so the infighting has been continuing. Nicola Sturgeon is facing a collapse in her leadership in the next week as uh, we are seeing Alex Salmon next Tuesday, the former leader of the SNP, uh, giving his testimony which could bring down Nicola Sturgeon as a First Minister of Scotland. Uh, the latest that we now have is that uh, firstly back in June 2019 Nicola Sturgeon promised, she said, that we will fully cooperate with uh, the Alex Salmon inquiry. Interestingly enough we just um, heard uh, thanks to the Daily Re uh, Record in Scotland, that Nicola Sturgeon's husband uh, has now rejected the, uh, to, to take part and actually give evidence to the Alex Salmon inquiry. This is following a recent thing a few about a week, weeks, a week or so ago when he actually lied, apparently, to the inquiry, to the Scottish uh, Parliament as well. Uh, essentially what started was that um, after his uh, poor performance, um, obviously this guy Peter Morrell is also uh, the chief executive of the SNP so he does have a powerful role in the party and uh, he was asked by a number of uh, Scottish politicians to uh, answer questions about Nicola Sturgeon and he himself as leader of uh, the chief executive of the party in terms of uh, his knowledge when it comes to this inquiry and what Alex Salmon actually did. Uh, so we now obviously have uh, the uh, Tory MSP um, uh, Murder F uh, Fraser who was the former Tory leader in Scotland saying that it, it, it is showing contempt, complete contempt towards the committee and must make himself available for questioning as a matter of urgency. Now for those of you who haven't been following this saga, um, Peter Morrell essentially has perjured himself uh, during this row and uh, we've got the, the latest uh, information in, in terms of what's been happening. Uh, so the Daily Record uh, revealed uh, that Morell sent text messages on the day after Alex Salmon was charged, uh, one of which showed him saying that it was a good time to be pressuring the police. Now he has now said he regrets sending that message and it was bad, uh, but during the evidence session when he was asked if there are other, any, any other text messages to any other party official on the same subject, he said no, not that I am aware of. There's nothing else, absolutely not. But then obviously in the letter to uh, the Crown Office uh, the inquiry has now said that it would seem to be the case that from information recently placed in the public domain that there were other texts and WhatsApp messages. Indeed the committee has written to you using its section 23 powers uh, set out in the Scotland Act to request the sight of those messages. So yes, the evidence actually exists that he lied. This is not going to look good. As I said, next Tuesday, Alex Salmon is going to give his testimony. If that's, been, that's proven right, then uh, Nicola Sturgeon might be forced to resign. Her husband, it could be also the second reason that could bring down her leadership. And it doesn't really look good for the people of Scotland that their government is that this incompetent and corrupt. Um, that they, the whole thing, firstly, in the mainstream media, you would think that this could be a big issue. If a scandal like this was happening in England, the BBC and Sky News will be all over it. But when you go on the BBC's front page, the issue with uh, Joanna Cherry, the MP who was sacked from the front bench yesterday, is just tiny in a corner. As you can see, it's not even a proper headline. It's just in a corner, it doesn't really matter. So at, at best, the BBC are just so uh, complacent and they don't care about Scotland. They think it's not an important part of the UK, or at worst, they're essentially helping Nicola Sturgeon by covering up one of the main stories that's been happening. Uh, to explain all this and the latest situation with the SNP government and the devolution and the powers that they have, uh, we have a special guest on the show today. We have Henry Hill uh, from Conservative Home who's an expert in Scottish and unionist politics. Let's go to Henry. Right now we're joined by Henry Hill from 
conservative home, one of the experts on Scottish, but also unionist politics in general. Welcome to the show, Henry. How are you? I'm all right. Thank you for having me. How are you? Yeah, good. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on this saga of uh, the Alex Salmon inquiry and Nicola Sturgeon's leadership? So the Salmon inquiry just seems to keep going from bad to worse uh, for Nicola Sturgeon. Nothing really concrete has landed yet, but all of the signs are that the Scottish government is desperately trying to shut this down. It has refused a request to broaden the scope of the inquiry. Uh, Peter Murrell, who's the SNP's chief executive and also Nicola Sturgeon's husband, uh, has been accused of misleading MSPs, uh, but has refused to return to give further evidence. They may yet compel him to do so. The, the MSPs themselves have actually used legal powers of the Scottish Parliament to compel the Crown Office to give evidence, which they've never done before. Uh, it is alleged that one a senior member of the Scottish Government's staff uh, was asked or asked to change their story. Uh, at some point during the process. So although we haven't got any concrete evidence yet, it does increasingly look as though at the very least, Nicola Sturgeon is spooked by something. Um, obviously, Alex Salmond has yet to give his own evidence. It may well be that he doesn't have the smoking gun that would be needed to bring down the first minister, but I don't think there's any doubt at this point that the whole saga is really doing the SNP uh, and Nicola Sturgeon personally a degree of political damage. And that in turn is making her more vulnerable to some of her internal critics inside the party. Yes, and yesterday we saw uh, the, the a bit of a reshuffle. Uh, they uh, managed to get rid of Joanna Cherry, one of their MPs in Westminster, and uh, the speculations are saying that uh, that's also because of the infighting, because Joanna Cherry took the other side with a number of others. Um, is, do you think that's actually the case? The speculation, speculations are right, uh, and is that going to damage the leadership even more? So I wouldn't say it was a reshuffle. It was really just a sacking. I mean, yep. Joanna Cherry was the only person who left their post. Um, Cherry, the re the thing that's really damaging about these divisions for the SNP is that they there are they they each one cuts across multiple issues. So you've got Salmond versus Sturgeon. That's the sort of headline title fight. But then that's also serving as a proxy for some really deep and deepening divisions on other issues. There's the question of. What do they do for their independence strategy if the government refuses to grant them a referendum? Do they go for an illegal Catalonia style referendum or not? And then you have all of this stuff about gender issues under Nicola Sturgeon. The SNP leadership um, has really pivoted quite hard towards the position of trans activists on transgender issues. And Nicola Sturgeon and, M uh, and Joanna Cherry and MP MSPs like Joan McAlpine, who are sort of more old fashioned feminists, yeah. um, they're bitterly opposed to that. There was recently a row because the, the SNP um, effectively sort of stitched up their selection process in order to ensure that the top seat on each list in the upcoming Scottish Parliament elections goes to either a BME or a disabled candidate. Uh, and that was done by basically some game playing on the NEC. And so there's all of these issues where not a majority in all of these issues. I think Nicola Sturgeon commands the support for a majority of the party. But there's more and more of these issues where there's an angry minority mobilizing often successfully against the leadership, you know, Nicola Sturgeon supporters lost the last round of NEC elections. And so that formidable discipline that the SNP's previously had, it's operated like a phalanx in British politics that's delivered so many extraordinary successes. That's starting to break down. Yes, and uh, you mentioned uh, how the, there's also this cultural battle right now. Um, the SNP leadership are going with this whole, uh, you can self-identify as disabled. And uh, it, it's all happening at the same time when they're also clamping down on free speech uh, with their regulations. Uh, it's quite dangerous, obviously, for in, in the middle of all this, the ordinary people in Scotland are going to be damaged anyway, because the SNP haven't even done what they were supposed to be doing, whether it's on education or health or other areas. Um, you did mention the potential referendums, even if they're going to go with the Catalonia route, uh, just go rogue or not. At this point, I know the opinion polls are still 50-50-ish. It keeps moving up and down in terms of ha wanting the referendum or not. Do you think this will actually uh, damage their chances of actually being credible enough as a party and government to offer it and people in Scotland uh, actually go with it? So it still looks as if the Scottish nationalists are on track to win uh, to stay in government after the next Scottish elections, either by winning a majority or by forming another sort of competence and supply arrangement with the Scottish Greens, who are also separatist. Uh, the question of a legal referendum is actually up to the Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. uh, and all the signs are that Boris Johnson really is sort of preparing himself for this fight and preparing to say no. I think he's right to do that. I think there are lots of principled arguments for doing that. You know, if you allow Scots to, to vote on independence every five years, that really does actually undermine some of the core moral foundations of the union. You know, how do you justify pooling and sharing of money, for example, if 
you know, that, that deal is predicated on the fact that it goes both ways. You know, if one bit of the United Kingdom's doing well today, it pays for another bit, but in balance of economic fortune shifts, the other bit will pay for the first bit. But if the second bit just says, okay, well, we'll stay in as long as we're receiving the money, but if ever we get prosperous or more prosperous, then we'll just opt out, then that restroy, destroys that reciprocity, reciprocity. But there's also very good tactical reasons. You know, Boris Johnson doesn't want to be remembered as the man who lost the United Kingdom. Mm. And the, the easiest way for him to do that is not to have the referendum, especially not if it looks like the SNP are ahead. Yep. Uh, the other good reason is the fact that, you know, Nicola Sturgeon herself, the polling suggests that she's absolutely central to the separatist mission. You know, the, the, the level of public support for Nicola Sturgeon personally is quite extraordinary. And she's been first minister since 2015. Mm. Po all political lives end at some point. I think that if the prime minister genuinely rules out a referendum in this parliament, you know, until 23, 24, 2025 or later, she's probably not going to be first minister at that point. And the SNP don't have anyone of her calibre to replace her. On the subject of an illegal referendum, I, there's no evidence, I think, that Nicola Sturgeon actually intends to go down that route. I think she needs her activists to believe that she might, because, as I said, the SNP are increasingly looking like they're getting ready to have a civil war. And the only thing that's really going to stop them doing that in the long run is the prospect of an imminent referendum. So she needs her activists to believe that she'll do whatever it takes. There's no actual sign that Nicola Sturgeon is going to do that. And I think that that's going to be one of the things that's very tricky for her, assuming that she wins the next Scottish elections, is that she's then going and, 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 and Boris Johnson says, no, you can't have an action, a Section 30 order. You can't have a legal referendum is what does she do? I don't think that the Scottish police or the Scottish courts or even the Scottish Parliament would collaborate with an illegal referendum. I don't think there's a majority in Scotland for an illegal referendum. It would divide her coalition and I think it would be to the advantage, blatantly, of the unionist forces for that to happen. So I don't think she's going to do it because she's too clever. Mm -hmm. But that's going to be a tricky thing for her to navigate when she's caught between that reality and an increasingly impatient and angry nationalist grassroots. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And I think especially in the, over the next week and the next Tuesday when the testimony happens and we're going to uh, get a lot more updates on that. And the, the mainstream media noticed, even the BBC, uh, yesterday when the news uh, about uh, Joanna Cherry came out, um, they, they don't seem to be caring that much. It wasn't in, on the main front page on the website, the headline. It was just in the corner somewhere on the BBC. Uh, I just feel like I mentioned earlier in the video that uh, it's either the mainstream media across the country, uh, f f well, unintentionally feel like Scotland's not an important part of the UK, um, or they just feel like you know people don't really want to know about Scotland. I think this is the problem where you know this uh, with the devolution that happened, you know, that years ago, it, we are creating more division. You know, the, the, whether it's the media or the mistakes of the establishment, and so we are now creating this two sides. You have got Scotland and England, and that's not really uh, safe for the uh, well, integrity of the union. Uh, but um, well, thanks again for coming on the show because um, next Tuesday we're going to have the update, and actually, depending on what happens then. Uh, I would love to have you back on the program to um, tell us your thoughts and see um, what's going to happen. Always happy to be on. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Well, I hope you found that helpful. It's always um, good to actually get the latest updates on these issues, as I said, because the mainstream media aren't really covering them. So on this channel, we'll keep you guys posted on a daily basis on the issue of the SNP and everything else that's happening in our country. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and click on that notification bell next to it to get notified when we release our shows. Uh, and don't forget, tonight, 8.30 p.m., we have our latest live stream. Uh, I'll be joined by Lacey Butcher, uh, and we'll be answering your questions live on the show, so don't forget to tune in at 8.30 p.m. I'm Maya TC, and I'll see you guys in the next video.